This is a MSI automation magnetic hypothermia instrument. And what we'll be demonstrating is heating and some of the controls that you have. So I'll press the green button and that turns on the machine. Now it'll go through a uh, startup procedure. First it'll turn on the color touch screen. And while it's going through the startup procedure, I'll just explain. We have a manual power control here, 0 to 100%. And then you have a switch next to it. <clears throat> and if you go to the automatic position, then you turn on the temperature controller. <clears throat> And the temperature controller is useful if you want to maintain a given temperature of the nanoparticles that you're trying to heat. But initially we'll heat in manual control just for demonstration purposes. All right, so I'll push the selector switch and now we're in manual power. <coughs> Now the screen itself has um, a built-in timer, so you can do timed heating. This is time in seconds. Right now it's set for five seconds. I'll, I'll change it to 10 seconds. And then if you want to use the timer, you, instead of pressing uh, start heat, you would press time heat. Right now we're not heating, we're just uh, demonstrating. Six seconds, seven seconds, eight seconds, nine seconds, and now it's off. Now if you look in the right hand corner, it says water flow, which means we don't have water pressure. And if you look over at the heat station, you have two, green, two lights, one is green, one is red. The green light is off, and it won't turn on until you turn on the, the water pressure. And the light is uh, triggered by a water pressure switch. And the red light will turn on when you're actually heating. And that's a safety feature for the operator. Because when you're heating with this type of machine, uh, there's no noise. And yet at the same time, you may have five or seven kilowatts of energy inside the heating coil. Now you'll notice uh, we have a test tube here with nanoparticles in it. And then we have a fiber optic cable. So I'm going to insert the fiber optic cable in, into the nanoparticles, which is a, a solution. And uh, we will do some manual heating. And I, I can control the heating from the, uh, we'll call it the keyboard, or I have a foot switch as well, which you cannot see. So I'll press uh, start heat, and now we're heating. And I'll press stop heat, press it again. We didn't have the power set quite far up high enough. Now we're at full power. We have an indication that says uh, system temperature is okay, and heating. And as you can see from the display, we're, I can modulate it up and down. And we'll turn it off. <clears throat> now if you scan over by the laptop computer, which is hooked up to the uh, fiber optic temperature sensor, See, we're currently at 32 degrees. If I step on the uh, foot switch to heat again, you'll see the temperature start to rise. And I'm going to turn on the uh, bar graph. And you see, we've already at that position. Now we're heating. You'll see the bar graphs. You can zoom in on. Okay. The 
bar graph is climbing. Tell what temperature it is? Um, 40? Really? Yeah, like 30, 40 ish. About to be 40. We're at 39, 38, 39 degrees centigrade, and we're continuing to climb. I let off on the foot switch so the power is off. I'm going to uh, do another demonstration. I removed the fiber optic cable from the test tube. It's warm. Cooled off the sample a little bit. I'm going to put the fiber, the fiber optic cable back in the test tube. I'm going to reset the display. Now we have a digital readout. Okay. Uh, this time we're going to use the temperature controller. Swing back over here. You can zoom in on it. I'm going to. Uh, I'll reduce the set point to uh, 35 centigrade. And I press set. Okay. So right now we are at 27.3. And that's the same value shown on the laptop computer. So we'll do this. Uh, we'll perform the same uh, heating trial, but you'll see that the temperature controller will prevent it from going above 35C. All right, so here we are. That's our starting temperature. We're in temperature control. And I'm going to go ahead and press the foot switch right now. Power's up. And you can see it's starting to climb. Pretty fast, because it's starting at a lower temperature. And remember, we're going to be uh, looking for the temperature profile to flatten out as it gets to 35 degrees centigrade. It's already starting to slow down. I mean, the process is a PID control program that's built into the temperature controller. So it will prevent the temperature from overshooting the 35 degrees. And if you scan back at the uh, control system, you can see that the power has been automatically uh, reduced to maintain that temperature. Otherwise, uh, were it not to be uh, controlling the temperature, 
the power would still be at maximum and we'd be close to 40 degrees centigrade. So swing back at the uh, laptop computer. And you can see we're holding it steady. Now watch what happens when I pull, I'm going to reduce, I'm going to turn the power off and I'm going to pull the uh, fiber optic sensor out of the nanoparticles and we'll go right back to room temperature. And you'll see the uh, profile drop like a rock. Okay, that's the end of the temperature control demonstration. I did want to point out a few things. Uh, with each system, we supply this uh, test tube holder, which is very convenient. Um, the heating coil itself is, is designed with safety in mind. It's uh, coated with a fiberglass sheath, and then it's dipped in a lacquer, electrical lacquer, and then check the connections to the heat station. We have this uh, nylon cover. So there is nothing that you can touch that's electrically active or hot. So that pretty much uh, concludes our demonstration. Uh, you have my website, you have my uh, email address. And I want to thank you for watching the video. And if you're interested in such a machine, uh, just identify yourself when you send us an email requesting further information. Thank you.